I wanted a piece of art to show me laying on my deathbed and collectors waiting for me to die so they can, you know, 10x their their profit. It just seemed like a fun idea. But yeah, for and for new artists, you know, I think it's important to to get feedback from collectors for those who are willing, but also to not be in their DMs every day and just keep it to when it's necessary. And I think the collectors will realize that. And I'm sure you've experienced it as well as a collector. But I think there's a tasteful way to do it if you do need advice and just try to find that happy medium. Uh, so your advice for new artists is, you know, definitely talk to your collectors, but keep it balanced. You're right. You know, some of us collectors, we do get a lot of, a lot of DMs from from up and coming artists, and as much as you want to help out, it's just it's hard sometimes to really balance that. I mean, you and I had an early early uh, DM conversation that resulted yeah. in a piece that never saw the day of light. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of how our friendship started, and I'm honestly very grateful that you DM me that day and that you know being able to watch you succeed and and see everything you've built and are continue to build has been has been really amazing. So thank you. Thank you for your art and your friendship. On that note, thank you. Uh, you know, your trajectory in the NFT space, obviously some big sales early on, uh, to some big collectors. And then you also kind of started doing a bit of performance art, I would say, mm. with some of your yeah. pieces. You did some very innovative things. Um, you had a piece where the token was burnt, uh, and then you managed to pull it out of the burn address for the collector. Uh, can you tell us more about, about your performance art around your digital art? I realized there was like uh, another opportunity because Richard from Manifold taught me early on that you can you can update metadata to change the art. So uh, for those who don't don't know what metadata means, it's just it's just the image data. So like the title, the description and the artwork and any tags related with. But um so once I realized you could do that, I thought, you know what, there's there's got to be interesting ways to tell stories, uh, you know, with this technology. So my, the first the first performance piece I did was with Christie's, actually, when um, I changed the art immediately after the sale ended to 6529. He he won the auction, but it started out as a girl holding a piano it was supposed to be a play on Banksy's girl with a balloon, but I had a girl holding a piano balloon, but then right towards the, like, right as the auction ended, I swapped the data out. This was back in the meme days. And uh, I swapped it out with a Pepe holding a balloon that said, sorry. And, um, cause I didn't want, I honestly didn't want to sell that original piece, but, um, that piece was more for me and, you know, personally, but, yeah. So after that, I realized, okay, there's, there's a market. Like I saw the response and people enjoyed it. So I realized there was a market for it. And I, um, I just, yeah, I just would come up with ideas like, like for the one where we, we sent the piece of the burn address. Um, that one's, that one's kind of a, an elaborate story and requires like me to really explain it in depth. But yeah, essentially I made a piece of art and it was me in a hospital bed and we put a little button underneath the bed that said unplug and to like so to give the collector an option to unplug me from life life support and kill me the premise to that piece was i wanted a piece of art to show me laying on my deathbed and collectors waiting for me to die so they can you know 10x their their profit it just seemed like a fun idea so yeah, so a collector named Trill bought it and he unplugged me right away without hesitation. He, he had no idea what would happen and he murdered me. And then um, I deleted my Twitter and I was, I was ghost. I was a ghost for three days. And then I, yeah, I, we brought the art back on the third day. Well, actually the muse brought the art back. We created a, a wallet called the muse and only that wallet was allowed to interact with the piece to pull it from the dead address. So yeah, we brought it back. I came back on Twitter and everybody, you know, celebrated it and it was a lot of fun. And uh and Trill didn't hate me after that. So it really seems that you've tapped into a couple of kind of almost like new audiences within the NFT collector base, right? So the Pepe collectors, uh, those who appreciate the early internet memes, and then those who wanna be entertained. Mm -hmm. um, the 
the different performances you've done. You also recently uh, minted an open edition that had the metadata switch to a CCO X copy piece before that turned into a token that you can burn for a beautiful, beautiful color study that you have. So it really feels like, you know, along the way you've built a bunch of different parts of your body of work that it are not just, you know, the digital output that you see on the screen, but you've been really exploring the medium that, you know, NFTs, tokens, ability to change metadata allow you. Are there any things out there that you've wanted to do, but you haven't been able to do or explore just yet with NFTs that you can maybe share, or as people like to call it, a little bit of alpha in that regards? Um, yeah, I definitely have some ideas, um, you know, that I'm, I'm working on, but um, nothing like right right now. I'm, I'm only focused on the, on the Christie's auction and just a few other things. But um, I think there are still opportunities to be a first in in some ways with this tech. And um, yeah, it's just, you know, once, once I come up with an idea, I'll reach out to young weekend who who's a a brilliant coder and artist as well. And we'll game plan it and figure out a way to write a contract that allows for certain actions that aren't normally allowed, like pooling art out of the dead address. But yeah, I don't, I don't think anything to announce just yet. And, um, but there are, there are a few things for 2023 that we are working on that will be exciting for sure. Now, I know you have a very rabid collector base who will be excited to uh, to see this come to fruition. Now, let's let's talk a little bit, you know, broader on this space. Obviously, you've had great success. Um, you know, it's not always the case for everybody that comes into NFTs. Um, what do you think are the biggest challenges today that artists are facing as, you know, this NFT goes from what was pretty much a price bubble um, mm-hmm. to now more realistic levels, and we move forward into hopefully, you know, broader adoption in the future. What do you see the main challenges being there for artists first? Um, yeah, I think I think getting eyes on their art is is quite difficult at this stage. I mean, it's it's hard to compare like my my path because I think mine was I don't want to say a fluke because I was. I was like right place, right time with the right kind of talent and, and edge, I think. But, but I think there's, there's always those opportunities for those who are, who are like hungry enough. You just have to try and think outside the box. And, um, and I also think getting like finding good collectors to support is because, you know, a lot of collectors follow other collectors. It's just, it's just kind of how the art world works. And, you know, even now, like I'll share a new artist that I find and, um, and their, their art, their collections go get bought up. And I know I'm sure it happens with you and many other, you know, um, popular collectors and artists, but, um, I think getting, getting eyes on, on new artists is important, but, um, it's also important. Like once you get that opportunity to continue to shine and like find your own way, because, there are, you know, there are certainly opportunities where you help an artist out, like by sharing their work because you love their work. And then they just, they don't really do much after that, which is fine. But if someone wants to have a legacy, I feel like it's important to really try and find an edge and just keep making the art you love. And eventually, you know, people will respond and, and, you know, find you. Hey, visionaries. Thank you for tuning in. For more free crypto content like this, head over to Real Vision dot com forward slash crypto you'll get early access to the most brilliant minds in the space to cut through the noise get in-depth analysis and get you ahead of the curve with unbiased insights